Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. James Gunn just revealed a first look at the new Superman suit. Grant Gustin talked about returning as his Barry Allen Flash in the new DCU movies. So we'll break it all down because I think we all had a version of the Flash movie in mind where they brought him back already that would have been far superior to the version of the Flash movie we got. Stephen Amell also talked about the new DCU movies, but he had some very different words. So both of them are of very different minds when it comes to the new stuff James Gunn is working on. But if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos, even though they're kind of taking this year off from the live action movies, which I think is going to help them, like just give them a little time away. We are getting some upcoming DC series, like the Penguin HBO series is coming later this year. That's a spinoff of Robert Pattinson's Batman movies. He'll be in at least one or two episodes of that. So there will be some live action DC stuff happening this year. But we finally got a look at David Cornswit's new Superman suit in Superman Legacy. The cast just did a big script read with James Gunn posting a bunch of pictures. This is who everyone is playing. I'll just put their names up here on the screen. So this is all sanctioned. Like James Gunn was letting them post pictures like this. Like they all assembled to do a traditional type of picture. This isn't somebody leaking stuff out. Tom Holland or Mark Ruffalo style. But they also posted his new Superman logo, which were on all their names at the cast read. This is going to be the logo that David Cornswitz Superman wears on his Superman suits. For some of you, this might be instantly recognizable, but if you're not a longtime comic book reader, this logo is essentially the Kingdom Come logo, meaning that David Cornswitz Superman suit will be a version of the Kingdom Come suit. Rewind to last year, James Gunn posted this picture of Kingdom Come Superman in the Justice League. Doesn't it make more sense now? When he said making plans, at the time there were a lot of theories this meant his next Justice League movie would resemble the Kingdom Come version of the Justice League, at least in characters that he used. Not necessarily the exact story, because all these Kingdom Come characters are way, way older. All the brand new people that he's casting for his DCU movies are way, way younger. But it turns out he was actually revealing or giving us a first look at what his new Superman suit was going to look like. When most people see the Kingdom Come Superman symbol though, they think of the black and red one since that's usually the one you see on the Kingdom Come covers. That's the one he's wearing in the panel James Gunn posted. But David Cornswit's Superman logo will be more like the version of the Kingdom Come suit that Brandon Routh wore during the Arrowverse version of Crisis on Infinite Earths episodes. Isn't it funny that the DCU is borrowing from the Arrowverse like, up oh, Arrowverse did it first. During those episodes, Brandon Rouse Superman went through his own arc where he started with the black and red version of the suit. Then in the final episode of Crisis, during the epilogue, he switched to the yellow and red version of the Kingdom Come logo. That's the logo David Cornswit is going to be wearing. Like, it'll look more like the colors of the traditional Superman logos. It'll just be in the style of Kingdom Come. And I don't think that his full Superman suit is going to be exactly like Brandon Rouse's Kingdom Come suit here. His version was meant to be exactly like the Kingdom Come suit from the comics with the red trunks and the belt style. James Gunn said one of the biggest questions that he gets every single day, like all the time, all day, is whether or not his new Superman is going to wear the trunks. I don't expect him to wear like the full Kingdom Come trunks. Like I don't think it'll look exactly like the Kingdom Come trunks, but I do think it will be very, very different from Henry Cavill's Superman suit who did not have the trunks. One of the other differences from Henry Cavill's Superman suits is that he's not supposed to have any special textures on the actual blue fabric. It's meant to be smoother like previous Superman suits like Brandon Rouse version of Superman or even Christopher Reeve Superman. Like they had smooth Superman suits essentially. If you look at Henry Cavill's Superman suits like Zoom and Enhance, this is what they look like up close. There was a special pattern woven into them that gave them this textured look. All of his suits looked cool, like I loved Henry Cavill's black suit. The colors on the Man of Steel suit were a little too muted for me, but the actual suit itself was great. So I think that James Gunn going no textures on the suit is going to give more of a homemade kind of feel to it. And for those of you asking, how does Superman in general just keep his suit in perfect condition all the time? Like sometimes he fights more powerful beings like Darkseid and his suit does get a little damaged. But how does he repair and keep up his super suit all the time? Like how does it not take damage when he gets shot by bullets? Way back in the Silver Age and more frequently in modern comics, the explanation they came up with is that his body's level of strength, like his invulnerability, just projects a little beyond his skin, just enough to protect his suit most of the time. The solution to this problem during Brandon Rouse's era of Superman and during Henry Cavill's era of Superman was to make the fabric itself Kryptonian, like super strong even without Superman wearing it. Brandon Rouse's version of Superman had his super suit made from the Kryptonian fabric that was in his pod when he came to Earth for the first time. So the suit was made on Earth, but it was made with Kryptonian fabric that was just refashioned into the suit. 
and Henry Cavill's Superman got all his suits from the Kryptonian ship, so the ship itself made the suits. We'll see how James Gunn solves this issue, like he will have a traditional Fortress of Solitude, so there will be a lot of Kryptonian stuff happening on planet Earth, and I think that'll be part of the plot of the movie too. But post all your reactions in the comments below, what do you think about David Cornswit wearing a yellow and red version of the Kingdom Come suit, like a brighter looking version of Kingdom Come? The other big news you may have seen recently was Grant Gustin and Stephen Amell talking about returning in the new DC movies as Flash and Green Arrow. It's really cool to hear him ready to come back so quickly. Personally, I don't expect that to happen, like him to come back as Flash in the movies anytime soon. Mostly, though, because it sounds like James Gunn is going to wait to introduce the new main Flash of his DCU movies for a couple of years. Just give people a little time to forget that criminal Flash. My name is Ezra Miller, and I am criminally excited to be a part of the Justice League. There were a lot of people after the Flash movie that were like, what if he came back, but as a version of the reverse Flash, like he would totally work as the bonkers, crazy, evil version of Flash. There's a lot you could say about that Flash movie. Michael Keaton was great as his Batman, but if they really wanted to go for the member berries, like it sounded like they wanted to, the Batman that most of the audience that they were actually trying to appeal to thinks more of Christian Bale's Batman as their Batman. Most people who saw Michael Keaton's Batman in theaters during the 80s and early 90s are much, much older now, like a much smaller percentage of the actual audience. Most younger fans, when they think of an older Batman coming back, are thinking of Christian Bale's Batman. Had they done the Flash movie with his older Batman coming back, Grant Gustin and Henry Cavill's Superman in the movie in a bigger way than he was, like there was Henry Cavill in the background and there were a bunch of deleted scenes with him, which I talked about at length during my Flash movie deleted scenes video. You can make like a whole movie with all the stuff they took out of that film. Had they not done all those weird, crappy looking CG effects with the cameos, like film them like traditional cameos with real people on screen, not CG monstrosities, that would have been a billion dollar movie. One of my biggest disappointments with that movie and a lot of other people too was not bringing Grant Gustin back. He even said no one from the studio even asked him to come back in the first place, so it wasn't like he was too busy filming the end of the Flash TV show to come back. He still totally could have done a cameo scene. I put all the blame on the former producers and the business people at DC and Warner Brothers for that. When James Gunn was hired, they all either got fired, they quit, or they're just not around anymore. So outside of having a creative like James Gunn who understands the comics and flat out just is a fan of them to begin with, which it sounds like a lot of people at DC and Warner Brothers were not fans of comics before this, generally I'm just way more optimistic about the upcoming DC movies because they got rid of a lot of that bad element like the business suits that were calling a lot of the shots before this. Who captures that spirit? The thing they don't talk about much when they talk about Christopher Reed, they talk about his pureness, his hope, his goodness. They talk about, you know, the way that he plays Clark as being so different from the way he plays Superman and how he can turn that on in an instant. Bye, Frisky. Long now. But there's this playfulness about Superman. This When he's saving a cat, he's got that wry smile. And that is one of the best parts of the movie is the playfulness of Superman. He enjoys what he's doing. He likes helping human beings. Stephen Amell also talked about the upcoming new movies. And on the other side of this coin here from Grant Gustin, he wasn't quite as kind as he was. I see a lot of announcements from about about DC and about the DC Extended Universe and about what they're gonna do with the movies. Do you know what, you know what I would prefer? Content. <laughs> like, I don't think anyone has ever gone to an IMAX to watch a press conference <laughs> or to like read Twitter. It's like, great, awesome. I'm glad you guys have all of these plans. Shut up and go execute them. In all fairness to him, he's not wrong. Like, he sounds a little salty about the way the studio treated him and Grant Gustin just in general. But it is a huge bummer that we have to wait so long to actually start getting some of this brand new stuff DC and James Gunn have been hyping up. Definitely sounds like Stephen Amell does not think he is coming back in the new DC movies, but I think previously he said he would come back if they asked him back. There were some jokes that James Gunn included about Green Arrow during Peacemaker. Like Green Arrow? No, not like Green Arrow. That dude goes to brony conventions dressed in the back half of Twilight Sparkle with a four inch wide butthole drilled in the costume. Maybe so we can breathe properly. So generally it just seems like James Gunn is not quite as big of a Green Arrow fan. 
But let me know in the comments, who do you want the new DCU version of The Flash to be? Like, do you want it to be a Barry Allen? Do you want it to be a Wally West? Which actor do you want to play the character? Right now, Creature Commandos is technically the first thing that he worked on personally that's part of the DCU. That's airing later this year. But really, Superman Legacy is the first live action movie. And that's the thing most people are waiting for because its success will determine a lot of the future of the DCU and whether or not it's going to be viable. Like, you have to. You absolutely have to have a Superman that everybody loves in order for this to all work. I tend to be a little more optimistic. The cast looks great right now. I trust his creative vision, but you really just need to see that first trailer to actually see what it's going to look like and feel like. He said he doesn't plan on releasing it until early 2025, so I'm not expecting any huge trailer anytime this year, but we'll probably see some early versions of the super suits and the characters behind the scenes, so there will be some stuff that we'll get a look at. Whatever they wind up releasing, of course I will do videos for it, so if you have any big questions or big reactions, just post them in the comments below. Everybody click here to learn about Black Panther 3 and the new T'Challa Black Panther coming back and click here to learn about Henry Cavill's new Warhammer series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.